Okay, so now we're going to chapter six in bronchiectasis. Um, as you can see here, we have a guy who's coughing a lot, um, a lot of secretions. He, um, his symptoms of bronchiectasis typically include a chronic cough of mucus production. Remember, it has to, um, he'll have a lot of increased mucus production. Um, here's a healthy bronchi, here's an increased mucus. So, uh, an acquired disorder of major bronchi and bronchioles that is characterized by a chronic dilation and distillation of one or more bronchi is usually a result of an extensive inflammation and destruction of bronchial wall cartilage, blood vessels, elastic tissue, and smooth muscle components. Um, one of the both lungs may be involved, commonly limited to a lobe or um, segment, and it's frequently found in the lower lobes. The smaller bronchi with less supporting cartilage are predominantly affected. Um, there are three forms of, sorry, got a little ahead of myself. So the anatomic alterations of uh, bronchiectasis. So we have hyperinflation of the distal alveoli, and as a, a result of expiratory check value valve obstruction of or atelectasis, consolidation and fibrosis as a result of a complete bronchial obstruction. So the long accepted reclassification subdivides the bronchiectasis into these three forms as you can see them right here. You have the fusiform um, varicose bronchiectasis, which are um, the bronchi are dilated and constricted in an irregular fashion similar to varicose veins, and they're distorted and bulbous shape. And then you have cylindrical bronchiectasis, which is going to be tubular. So you think of it as, when we go look at them in a minute, you'll see the difference. Uh, bronchi are dilated and rigid, rigid and have regular outlines similar to a tube. Then you have cystic uh, bronchiectasis, which is saccular. So you have bronchi progressively increased in diameter until they are in large sac-like, uh, cyst-like sacs in the lung parenchyma. And this is the greatest damage in the tracheal bronchial tree here in the saccular, okay? So here we're looking at the varicose bronchiectasis. So if you think about varicose veins, they look like that exactly, okay? Um, then you're looking at cylind cylindrical, okay? So it looks just like a cylinder, um, very hard to miss. Um, cystic, uh, so you got saccular bronchiectasis. These are what those look like. And then you have, um, you're looking at an illustration of excessive bronchial secretion. So that's D. Um, these are all on page, um, 260. Um, if you want to look at them a little closer, I know you probably had to label them or look at those in your homework. Then you have atelectasis, obviously, because this is a common anatomic alteration. We're going to see that in every, <clears throat> in a lot of these. So, um, major pathologic or structural changes, um, in, uh, bronchiectasis. You have chronic dilation and distillation of bronchial airway. So that's because it's constantly providing, producing sputum. You have excessive production of often foul smelling sputum, bronchospasm, hyperinflation of the villi, air trapping, atelectasis, consolidation and parenchymal fibrosis, hemoptysis secondary to bronchial arterial erosion. Um, so our etiology and epidemiology. Um, you have most all causes of bronchiectasis is, um, includes some combination of bronchial obstruction and infection, so some type of pulmonary infection. Although this is not a well-defined entity, it's po believed that a possible mechanism for post-infection infectious. NCFB is a significant lung infection, um, which is called non-cystic fibrosis bronchiectasis. Um, and cystic fibrosis is the most common cause of bronchiectasis in children. So they can develop it then in developed countries. Um, during early childhood, which is that an it causes anatomic alterations of developing a lung that allows persistent bacterial infections. As a result, the continuous bacterial infections lead to that bron bronchiectasis. So about 4.2 um, per 100,000 um, young adults in the U.S. Um, um, 
Low incidence is often attributed to early medical management. So that's um, how that they can get that bronchiectasis developing. So you have risk for chronic pulmonary infections such as COPD, aspiration, bronchial airway, mucoid impaction. So if you're if you have CF, you probably do not want to smoke because it's going to make your seat. You get COPD, right? OK. Um, Tracheobronchial abnormalities, uh, advanced age, uh, malnutrition, the alpha one, that so social economical economic disadvantage. Um, so congenital anatomic defects, immunodeficiency, uh, abnormal secretions, clearance, miscellaneous disorders such as, so there's all a whole bunch of them in uh, table 16.1. So our diagnosis, um, the primary diagnosis tool includes an internal diameter of bronchus that is wider than its adjacent pulmonary artery. Um, we're gonna get a CT of that and it's a failure of the bronchi to taper and the visualization of the bronchi in the outer one to two centimeters of the lung fields. And spirometry testing, um, it can be for bronchiectus as primary and obstructive or restrictive lung pathology. So you'll see that um, it needs to be determined through that. So your routine chest x-ray may reveal overinflated marked volume loss, increased opacities, uh, dilated fluid filled airways, crowding in the bronchi and atelectasis. And that high resolution CT um, is going to be the best way to find um, what's going on. <sighs> Cardiopulmonary clinical manifestations of bronchiectasis. So you're going to have um, Excessive bronchial secretions, bronchospasm, consolidation, increased alveolar capillary membrane thickness, and clinical um, data obtained at the bedside, you're going to have may, cre uh, may create an obstructive or restrictive lung disorder or a combination of both, depending on the amount of bronchial secretions, the destruction, fibrosis, atelectasis associated with the bronchiectasis. So once again, we're going to create a what? tachypneic, um, tachycardic, and increased hypertension, use of accessory muscles on inspiration, expiration. When we're obstructive, we're gonna use that pursed lip breathing. We're gonna have an increased AP chest diameter, so a barrel chest when we're obstructed. We're gonna be cyanotic, we're gonna have digital clubbing, uh, peripheral edema and venous distension, so distended neck veins, pitting edema, could have an enlarged and tender liver. So cough, sputum production, and hemoptysis. So chronic cough with production of large quantities of foul-smelling sputum is a hallmark of bronchiectasis. So our chest assessment um, is going to be a decrease when we're obstructive, um, tactile and vocal fremitus, hyperresonant percussion note, diminished breath sounds, wheezing and crackles. Um, when restrictive in nature, over areas of atelectasis and consolidation, we're gonna have increased tactile and vocal primitives, bronchial breast sounds, crackles, whisper pectoral qua, and dull percussion note. And we have our PFTs here when we're obstructive, um, obstructive, restrictive. See the difference you're gonna see, you're gonna have decreased FEVC, um, FEVC V1 and VCs. And then when you go into a restrictive pattern, you see where your, your flows uh, become higher you have reduced flows in restrictive patterns. So if you were kind of curious. So um, here we have, again, acute respiratory alkalosis in your mild to moderate stages. And then in your severe stages, we're gonna have chronic vent failure um, and then acute vent failure and superimposed again. Um, hemodynamic, again, um, cardiac outputs neutral. I mean, neutral, I mean, normal. <laughs> so our abnormal, um, Laboratory test, uh, we have um, in procedures, uh, increased hematocrit and hemoglobin again, about, about uh, elevated white blood cell count, if acutely elevated, because we're gonna have a lot of infections. Our sputum exam, we're gonna see a lot of streptoco streptococcus pneumoniae, haemophilus influenzae, pseudomonas arginosus, and anaerobic organisms. X-rays, we're gonna have um, bronchiectasis when it's obstructive, translucent, large lung fields, depressed, flattened diaphragm, 
Um, long and narrow heart pulled down by the diaphragm and large heart when heart failure is present. Areas of consolidation and or atelectasis may or may not be seen, seen in tram tracks. Area of consolidation and or atelectasis. Uh, when the bronchiectasis is primarily restrictive in nature, you're going to have atelectasis, consolidation, infiltrase. That's going to have um, pneumonia and increased opacities. So right here, we're going to see um, a gross uh, cystic uh, bronchiectasis, which is a PA um, chest x-ray showing overinflated lungs. They are multiple ring opacities, uh, most obvious at the lung bases and ranging from 3 to 15 millimeters in diameter. So this is bronchiectasis, okay? So this is your cystic, okay? Bronchiectasis. So post um, anterior, okay? So here we have a left lower bronchiac lobe. Uh, left lower, okay. The marked volume loss of the left lower lobe is indicated by a depressed helium, hilum, I mean, Vertical left main stem bronchus, um, me metastinial shift, and left sided trans radiancy. Okay, I see a lot on the right too, though. So, cylindrical bronchiectasis. Okay, so we see, okay, look, they did a bronchogram. See how they filled it up and it looks cylindrical? Um, it's a bronchiectasis. Um, sorry, I'm looking for something. Um, affecting the whole of the lower lobe except for a superior segment. Few sides, branches, field, basal airways are crowded together, indicating volume loss of the lower lobe. And it's a common finding in bronchiectasis. So we have a cystic. So cystic saccular. So this is what it would look if it was cystic. So you have a right lateral bronchogram showing cystic bronchiectasis affecting the lower lobe. The posterior uh, segment of the upper lobe. So now we have the varicose bronchiectasis. Here was so here was cylindrical. Here's varicose. So there's a difference. Okay, left posterior oblique projection of the left bronchogram in a patient with ciliary dyskinesia syndrome. Okay, ciliary dyskinesia syndrome. So that's CDS. So all basal bronchi are affected by varicose bronchiectasis. So <clears throat> primary Cellular dyskinesia syndrome, it's a rare genetic lung disorder. It's also known as immotile cilia syndrome, and it's associated with Carter Jenner's uh, syndrome. In people with PCD, the tiny hair-like structures are cilia that are supposed to be moved, move mucus out of airways, are abnormal, or do not move, okay? So that's causing problems. So then you have over here a signet ring sign in patients with cystic fibrosis. And now again, um, a CT with cylindric bronchiectasis. This is an example from two patients, airways parallel to the plane of the sector in an anterior segment of an upper lobe shows changes of cylindrical bronchiectasis bronchi are wider than normal and fail to taper as they proceed towards the lung periphery. Two patients, so yeah, okay, so you can tell that. So varicose bronchiectasis is a patient with allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis with cystic fibrosis, and the bronchiectic airways have corrugated or beaded uh, appearance. So um, a aspergillus, uh, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillus. So a, I just can't pronounce it. So um, that's a CT of A. That so it's a condition that's characterized by an exacerbated response of the immune system. So um, it's a hypersensitivity response to the fungus of Aspergillus, and it can be a fumigatus. Um, it uh, occurs most often in patients with asthma. So asthma pa asthmatic patients can get it, or cystic fibrosis, and it's Aspergillus spores or you. Ubiquitous uh, in the soul and are commonly found in the sputum of healthy in individuals and is responsible for the spectrum of lung diseases known as aspergillosis. And here we have cystic bronchiectasis in the upper lobe. That is a lot, you guys. That looks pretty bad. This person looks like they're going to have to get new lungs. 
So general management, uh, management of bronchiectasis, so the treatment of underlying diseases um, may not be possible. So general treatment plan is controlling pulmonary infections, um, controlling airway secretions and obstructions, preventing complications, uh, antibiotics, bronchodilators, expectorants, CPTs, vaccinations. So we needed to be doing daily chest percussions, posterior drainage, and effective coughing exercises to remove bronchial secretions, antibiotics, um, once again, bronchodilators, expectorants, and often prescribed um, in exacerbations. We need to avoid getting upper respiratory infections, smoking, and pollutants to help reduce susceptibility to pneumonia. Um, surgical lung resection might be um, indicated. So on our protocols, we need to look at oxygen to treat that hypoxemia. Um, bronchopulmonary for a directed cough, uh, which for me a lung um, expansion is too. Exercise breathing programs, audiogenic breathing, forced expiratory, CPT, need a suction, oscillatory PEP, high frequency chest wall compressions, lung expansion, IS, deep breathing, cough, um, meds, uh, sympathometic and parasympathetic agents, bronchial smooth muscle relaxation, such as albuterol, apotropium bromide, mucomis, corticosteroids are discouraged. They're really discouraged in um, bronchiectus patients. Um, mechanical ventilation protocol, um, NIV or ventilator um, is okay. It just depends on what's best at the time. And, okay.